Hi everyone, let's talk about Brahma Mahata, divine time, nectar time. In Ayurvedic teaching, time is called Mahata and 30 Mahatas make up a day and a night. In Western time calculations, one Mahata is equal to roughly 48 minutes. And the study of Ayurveda suggests an optimum time to wake up in the morning. And this time is known as Brahma Mahata, meaning divine time because it's said to be the perfect time for gaining or realizing Brahma Gayan. Brahma Gayan means divine knowledge and the practical experience of realizing God. This divine time, Brahma Mahata, encourages human beings to wake up 96 minutes, which is equal to two 48 minute Mahatas prior to sunrise daily. Kundalini Rishis define this time as Amrit Bella, meaning nectar time, and referring to the Amrita, nectar of the gods, synonymous with Soma, Manna, and of course, the sacred secretion. And Jesus observed this time also. As it says in Mark 1.35, very early in the morning while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. There is much scientific evidence that supports the divine nature of this wonderful time phase. Here are a few examples. Oxygen levels in the atmosphere are higher, which may contribute to improved brain function, alertness, and overall vitality. In the early morning hours, especially in natural settings, there are higher concentrations of negative ions, which have a positive effect on mood, cognitive performance, and overall well-being. The cool temperatures promote better thermoregulation and metabolism. This all coincides with what Ayurvedic studies mean when they say that Brahma Mahata, the divine time, is dominated by Vata Dosha, the energy of lightness, space, coolness, freshness and the air. These quotes from P. Radha shed a dazzling light on the science behind Brahma Mahata. Let's take a look. During Brahma Mahata, the Ayurvedic practitioners did physical exercises to get more cosmic energy. The scientists discovered that the ozone layer on the earth generates more ozone gas, O3, at this time, which will be helpful to change psychological parameters, meaning spiritual and mental understandings. Ozone therapy has been utilized and heavily studied for more than a century. Medical ozone gas O3 is used to disinfect and treat disease. It helps to treat diseases like infected wounds, circulatory disorders, geriatric conditions, macular de degeneration, viral diseases, rheumatism, arthritis, cancer, SARS, and even AIDS. The pineal gland is a master gland which controls all the other hormones of the body and it generates these hormones more easily while meditating during this period. The ozone gas can stimulate the segregation of melatonin secretions, so the upgrades of melatonin discussed in my books by the pineal gland regulate core body temperature and plasma levels of cortisol. Thyroid hormones are vital for the control of metabolism and they are closely related with vitamin D which is also rich in the atmosphere at this time. The thyroid is essential in every aspect of health like energy, mood, body weight and circulation. And all of those quotes were from oriented human traditions with basic science and automating health by P. Radha. So in other words, there are many profound benefits of rising 
at Brahma Mahata, including a peaceful and rejuvenating effect on the mind and the subtle centers of the body, plus a thinner atmospheric veil promoting inner vision or third eye activity and the opportunity to upgrade melatonin into DMT and the other biochemicals of enlightenment. Personally, I've noticed that there are even certain types of birds in my garden at this time of day that literally never come to my garden at other times. Specifically, goldfinches seem to love Brahma Mahata and they are really beautiful. Also, you've probably noticed that you dream more first thing in the morning because your CSF has finished flushing your system of the metabolic byproducts of your thoughts and actions from the previous day. I mean, I know I always have very clear dreams and visions as I'm drifting in and out of sleep between pressing snooze in the morning more than I do towards the end of the day. With the mind totally cleared by the incredible chemicalization that occurs when we're asleep, Brahma Mahata is the perfect time to practice meditation or self-reflection. Our lens is completely clear and we're in a state of receptivity. The Ayurvedic practitioner Akhayas, I think I've said that right, stated, Early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy and wise. This really amused me because during one of life's recent challenges, the 2020 and 21 lockdowns, I had to write Elevation, the divine power of the human body, between 3.30 in the morning and 8 a.m. each day so that I could be sure to get some peaceful and uninterrupted hours of work before my son, who was only three years old at the time, woke up and, you know, needed my attention. And I do remember that after a few days adjustment, I just started to bounce out of bed, so eager to return to my studies and Of course, I went to bed earlier in the evenings too, but in the midst of all those goings on in the world, I felt so authentically grateful for each new day. Of course, I didn't buy into any of the mainstream fear-mongering anyway, but still, if you think about it, you probably know someone, either personally or a celebrity, who promotes their early morning lifestyle as well. And this is why. Brahma Mahata is also discussed in the Hindu faith. And of course, many religions have their early morning prayer calls. And again, this is why. The last perspective I want to share on this Uh, that may seem controversial to some of you is from the crystalline canopy firmament theory website and it says it is possible to envision the appropriate alignment of the firmament's components for a brief time each morning Since these components are capable of transferring radio signals from space, the alignment could make audible the music of the spheres or stellar bodies. So basically they're saying that the firmament is visible because the veil is clearer at this time of day. And when I first read this, I couldn't help but wonder if this is why we hear whispers of spirit or clear audible messages first thing in the morning more regularly as well. In conclusion, Brahma Mahata really is the perfect time to experience the freshness of the environment, which will keep you fit and healthy physically and mentally primed as well. Personally, I don't practice the 96 minute Brahma Mahata rule specifically, but I do do my regular spiritual practices first thing in the morning, 
before the rest of the household is awake. And I have done this for as long as I can remember. And I also lengthen my morning practices or sadhanas when the moon is in my sun sign. As I said before, the period when I was unwittingly rising during Brahma Mahata to right elevation, I felt better than ever. And maybe it's no coincidence then that out of all of the books I've written, Elevation is the one closest to my heart. Getting into a new routine takes time, but as you begin to get tired earlier and fall asleep more easily, you combat insomnia and therefore you combat depression also. So waking early can become a win-win. And let's have one more quote from an anonymous source. The initiate who rises in anticipation of the sun attains the knowledge of supreme power and gathers eternal pleasure, happiness and joy. Thank you so much for watching. As always, the links to my books, courses and other resources are in the description box below this video. May divine light manifest itself in you all. Always and in all ways. Namaste.